Hi, this is Massimo and in this video we can finally start to explore the virtual console context. So the virtual console is a quite empty canvas where you can uh, basically unleash your creativity and uh, place some so-called widgets to control your light show depending on your needs and your workflow. So the first thing to notice is that unlike version 4, the version 5 virtual console is uh, organized in pages. From the side panel, I can uh, basically add widgets or edit them. So if I hit edit, I can access the properties of the selected uh, widgets. In this case, uh, I have the page selected and I can rename it like um, my basic uh, page, for example. And uh, I can adjust the color, for example, of this of this one, um, and the foreground color for uh, labels and so on. I can also adjust the size of each page individually, because every page has its own uh, uh, properties. But I can also set, for example, a protection pin uh, for each uh, for a page. So if I, for example, there's no selected pin right now, there's no set pin. So if I enter a magic pin like this and I go to another page and then hit this page again, I will be asked for a pin to access this page. This is particularly useful if you want to arrange a virtual console with different levels of access. Uh, for example, with an administrator that can access everything or with um, a simple operator that has restricted access to the show features. So to start adding widgets to your virtual console, just click on the plus button and the list of supported widgets will be displayed on the side panel. So to add widgets to the selected uh, virtual console page, just drag and drop them from the list here, like this. When you drop them, uh, they have a default name and a default geometry. As you can see, when I drag a widget, uh, there's um, this highlight color here that indicates the target area where the widget will be actually dropped. Since frames are containers, they can actually host the children widgets. Uh, so if I drop the button here, for example, and I go edit the frame, you can see that the button is actually contained in the frame. Um, the nice thing is that I can easily uh, take one widget and move it from a frame to another very easily like this. So whenever I press on a widget, as you can see, the properties here indicate the specific settings that I can uh, adjust for each type of widget. Um, widgets can be resized, as you can see, from any corner. And there is also snapping to have a uniform uh, size like this. Frames can have pages, so I can enable uh, pages and I can decide how many I need. And the widget now will have several pages that can be scrolled like this. So basically this will make a frame uh, with multiple pages so you save a lot of space and so on. It's basically the same concept of the main pages of the virtual console. So as you can see on the right side of the screen there's also the function manager icon which means that I can access functions from here for the simple reason that I can basically drag and drop functions as well on the directly on the virtual console. For example, if I take the all yellow function and I drop it on the virtual console, it will simply create a toggle button and it will be ready to be um, um, started. Uh, if I take one function and I drag it over a button, the button will, um, the function will be attached to the button. Uh, we can inspect it like this. As you can see, all position center now is uh, attached to this button. I want to move also this button in this frame. 
and now I will explain uh, the difference between a, a normal frame and a solo frame. So a toggle button basically is uh, something that I, if I click it once, it will start a function. As you can see, I have one running function. And if I click it again, it will stop the attached function. In a normal frame, I can basically enable uh, as many buttons as I want uh, and I can toggle them back. If I move uh, these buttons in a solo frame, the behavior changes because it becomes exclusive. So if I enable one button and I have one function started and then I click on another button, the function from the first button, from the active button will be disabled, will be stopped and the uh, button that I just clicked will be started, the function will be started and will be the only one running in the solo frame. This is a nice behavior when you need to switch from a scene to another. Consider that any type of function can be attached to a button, not just scenes. So for example, a chaser or a collection or whatever you want. You just need to uh, drag it to the virtual console and then you have a button. So let's go a little bit into details of what we can achieve with buttons. To do that, I'm going to create a couple of uh, functions for the par group very quickly, like this. And I'm going to dump, as we, can, as we saw before, um, like pars. And then Okay, and I'm gonna also detach the 3D view like this. And I'm gonna put it on top of everything with Power Toys. So, I'm gonna put it on the corner. And I'm gonna add the just the function that I just created here. And the preview is here. So, if I launch these functions together, I have the scene that I just created. So as I mentioned before, um, buttons have different uh, pressure behavior where the default one is the toggle mode that we just saw. But uh, scenes um, can also be flashed with buttons, which means that if I enable this mode and I'm gonna um, run these buttons again, I have this behavior here where I can basically press and hold the button for as long as I want and I will flash the attached fun function. In this case, it's just a scene can be flashed. Uh, the nice thing is that if I, for example, edit this function and put a fade out time like, I don't know, 500 milliseconds like this, and I flash the, the scene again, I can have a nice fade out effect when I release the button like this. And this is basically the flash mode. I can also have a button uh, that stops all the functions and it will have this stop indication so you will recognize it. So if I launch this function here that does this thing, the stop all function will do uh, something like this. So it's basically can be used as a, a safe uh, uh, fallback button in case uh, you run out of control uh, during a live show and in this way you reset everything that is running with just one single click. Um, a button can also as, act as a toggle blackout behavior which means that when pressed and the icon is this, when pressed uh, all the intensity channel will be lower to zero so everything will go dark as long as the button is pressed. I'm not sure you can see it in the preview. 
because this acts uh, in the outputs so you will actually see it on stage but not on the previews. So this is the end of the first part of the virtual console. Thanks for watching and ciao!